Hello guys, welcome back to our channel and today is bath day again. A lot of you have been asking so many questions on our first Wash Your Husky Like a Pro video that we figured we'll just create another video answering your questions and also adding some great additions that we've been doing since we published the last video. Keep in mind while watching this video that this is a question and answers video and a follow-up video to the original where we actually go through the entire bathing process. Don't worry, I'll leave all the links of everything in the description of this video. One of the common questions we've been getting from you guys is if this method can be applied for any dog or if this method is just for huskies. Well, of course this method works with a husky squad, but this method is not breed specific. This method is way more about the experience, the way you have your bath day, the way your pup feels bath day, the way you experience bath day. It's way more about that than about the breed. Well, of course, we'll pass you along all the great tips we have for double-coated pups like Huskies and other pups who have more challenging coats to clean, but this is really more about the experience that the squad and your pup can have. So many of you have been giving us great feedback on the last video, how wonderful the experience now is on bath day, and that's what it is about. It's not about breed specific it's about making it an incredible experience for you and your pup that it turns out to be more like a spa date instead of like oh my god we have to go do this again for both you and for your pup as we go through this video we'll also be sharing with you three reasons why we choose to wash our pups ourselves instead of paying a groomer to do it for us and no it's not just about the money savings it's way deeper than that while many of you ask how you can find those dog wash places it's actually pretty simple you can search yelp for keyword dog self-wash you can search google maps for dog self-wash. Those are the two primary places that I find where to wash our pups. We've been traveling across the country and most of the time we find those self-wash places pretty easily. They're so great. You don't have to break your back. Comes with a ton of towels. It's just a whole different experience. Many of you have been asking how long it took for the squad to enjoy their bath day, be this calm, and really have this amazing experience that we now have with the squad. The answer is probably going to surprise you. It actually took them no time at all. Maybe just one bath day. How is that possible? The answer is quite simple but it's actually so profound to me because it took me so many years to figure it out. It wasn't them, it was me. I didn't realize that I had to meet their needs. I didn't realize that it's really about how I feel on that day. It's really about the experience I give them, that it's gonna make them have this great experience instead of dreading bath day, which we see so often. So the moment I started working on myself and making sure that I meet their needs, everything changed, literally within one bath day. That's all it took. Dogs are so simple, so easy. It's often that we humans complicate it. It's often that we get distracted. It's often that we don't pay attention. But the moment we change that, we give them their needs, which we cover in the last bathing video, and we also spend quality time with them. We don't get distracted, we pay attention, we make it a calm experience. Everything changes.
Okay, let's get started. First, we fill up the bottles full of water. I bring these from home. They're fantastic to dilute the natural shampoo and conditioner. Don't worry, I'll leave the link below where our current favorite products are and also these great water bottles you can buy and bring with you. Many of you have been asking about using human shampoo and conditioner for dogs. It doesn't matter if it's natural or not. What we learned by now is that dogs' skin pH scale is very different than a human, and they formulate specific dog shampoo for this. Human shampoo and conditioner can cause severe skin problems. It can create an environment where bacteria, viruses, and parasites can grow. We definitely don't want that. Natural dog shampoo with minimal ingredients is the way to go. Okay, let's have the magic begin. You know those days where you had to pick up your pup, pull him, drag him, trying to get him into the tub and give him a bath? That really does not have to happen. All it takes is their absolutely favorite treats and next thing you know, they're all trying to get into the tub to get a bath. Your pup's favorite treats, natural and calorie low of course, is a great way to introduce bath day to them. Bath day does not have to be traumatizing, it can be a great experience to look forward to. Especially when you first get started, keep those treats handy, give them generously and you'll be surprised how things start changing really fast. All right, Kimari, see, there's another treat. She's usually the one that doesn't love bath day. So I'm reinforcing it more, giving him affection, giving him cuddles, more treats, letting him know I'm paying 100% attention. Nothing is distracting me. It's all about them. Let's make this a great experience. One quick tip for you guys here. If you are bathing your pup yourself, what you can do here is just like me, where I wrap one of my arms around him in the front to give him that security and also allows me to control the situation a little bit better. It allows you to give him cuddles, but this just makes him feel a lot more at ease than being pulled by a collar. I find this to be way more beneficial, way more calming, and way more connected with them. The interesting thing is that the more we practice this, the better we get, the more relaxed we are, the better experience we give them, the more they're chilled out too, the more they're relaxed, they enjoy the experience, there are people around, there are dogs around, there's noise, and it literally doesn't matter to them. This is amazing and priceless to us. Patience and calm energy really pays off. Just look at Titus. No forcing. He's coming for his treats and he knows it's not gonna be a bad experience. It's gonna be awesome. Another quick tip for you guys, if you can find a pouch that's very easy to access those treats with the zipper and you keep it open, it really helps so you don't have to go digging for them. Okay, this is why we love diluting the shampoo in those water bottles. It makes it so much easier than having to go around with a little bit of shampoo on their coat. And remember guys, the last video with the full instructions has details, how to use those tools and how to bathe your pup properly. So just make sure to watch it. But just look at Yuna's face. She's so enjoying this and this makes us so happy. And remember, 
keep those treats coming. Let your pup know, hey, there's more of that coming. There's more treats. This is a great day where you get treats, you get to spend time, especially when you're first starting out with bathing your pup and they're not used to it. Giving them a little bit extra treat than they usually would is a good thing. Later on, you can taper it down a bit because they'll already know that it's a great day, but we never stop giving treats. It's always gonna be there. Okay, so here's a tip for those of you who are dog parents for dogs like Huskies, German Shepherds, long hair coats, anything that's not very short. Here you can apply lots of diluted conditioner, not just to moisturize the coat, but also to brush out any of that loose hair. Leave the conditioner in and you'll be surprised where you're gonna get out. For full details how to do all of this, be sure to watch our last Wash Your Husky Like a Pro video. But don't forget, be gentle. It's so important. Once they hurt one time, it's going to take them so much longer to trust you again. Alright, so here comes the face wash question. We've been getting so many of those questions related to washing the face. We haven't found a face shampoo that we like that's very natural and the ingredients are minimal so we just use the diluted shampoo just a little bit on one face cloth so you don't need to use a lot just a little bit but what you want to do here is be very gentle don't go over the eyes gently wash hold the pup's face with one hand and go through the entire face don't forget kisses, don't forget to remind them that you're gonna be gentle, that you're gonna be kind. It really, really works. You wanna get all of that out. Treats help too, trust me. And it's so much better than spraying water on your pup. All right, so here are the ears. This is something new that we've added. The squad gets into so much outdoor trouble. So using that same cloth that has very, very little water, to wash the upper part of the inner ears, not all the way to the bottom, but just the upper to get the dust out, is a really good time to do this. I didn't used to do that, and then I found so much dust in there and whatnot from getting into trouble when we're outdoors. So this is a really good time to take care of that. Rinse the cloth well, and then go through the process to just rinse the face, rinse the ears, but remember, treats is so important in this because you want to make this a positive experience. See, Yuna just cannot get enough of it. And then go through rinsing the face very well. Make sure that the cloth is not wet. You want it to be very well wrung out. What we also learned is that the health of the ears, besides of course environmental conditions, the health of the ears really depends on your dog's diet. This is something to keep in mind. Okay guys, this is something new we added. I grab that face cloth after the face is clean and I use the leftover shampoo to really wash those legs, toes, paws, everything gets washed really well because I find that doing it just with my hands or with a scrubby just does not get the dirt out. So after the face is already clean, I take that face cloth and I take care of that. That's why I bring one face cloth per pup because after I finish using it to wash the paws, I don't put it back on the face anymore. Oh, 
Okay, I know I said this last time, but be sure to rinse everything off very well. You don't want anything left over after bathing your pup. Alright guys, this is another tip for long hair dogs. When you finish bathing, squeeze as much water as you can out of the legs, out of the body. This will prevent you from having to use 10 towels. You'll get away with about three. During bath time, we encourage the shaking. The more they shake, the easier it is to dry them. Okay guys, at this point I first dry the face and the ears, we don't want to leave any moisture left in the ears, so this goes first. After that I take my time and I use at least three towels to dry the body thoroughly. Don't forget make this a good experience. Okay, I make sure here to take my time with using as many towels as I need to dry Kimari as much as I can. The more I do that, the less time I'll have to spend with a hairdryer, which is never as fun. So using plenty of towels and not being stingy with this really helps out. Okay, here is something we've been working on with the pups. The trust to pick them up and put them down whenever we need to. Not only is it helpful in these situations, but in the outdoors, it is priceless. Okay, in this video, it's gonna be the very first time that I'm going to attempt to blow dry Kimari's coat. I've never done this with her because she doesn't like it. So this time I'm gonna be showing you guys live how I'm gonna work with her and make her feel completely comfortable, happy, and at ease so I can hair dry her. All right, let's get these pups to chill out because they all want the snacks and afterwards we can get started. Watch, here comes the husky thing. Gets back up, <laughs> stubborn. I gotta wait and be patient till he lays back down. He knows what he's supposed to do. Okay, so dogs feel way more comfortable after they find out what something is by smelling it instead of just applying it to them. So what I do, instead of spraying directly on them, which sometimes can scare dogs, I spray the spray on my hands. This is an anti-tick and flea repellent and I massage it into their coat. Now this one works very good for where we live because this area is not infested with a lot of ticks and a lot of insects, but I'm not sure that it would work very well in areas like New England or places that have a lot of that. We're still working on the subject. We still are not sure about the right and healthy way to address ticks and fleas in locations where it's very infested. What we do know is that a healthy bathing routine, a healthy home cleaning routine helps with preventing a lot of issues when it comes to the subject. All right, Kimari, let's get that trust going. Let's see if I can blow dry her. Let's see if I can pull it off to make her comfortable so I can dry her coat 
much better than what I used to. All right, treats first. Good girl. I have the blow dryer on, on a low setting, coupled with treats, and this is magic. This is making me so happy. This was such a great feeling. She was so much more focused on the treats and less on what I was doing. And by keeping the setting low for the first time to let her know that this is not scary, I think it's going to change the game long term. Kimari is going to enjoy blow drying her coat. I love this. You guys have also been asking about using a human hair dryer for dogs. We really don't recommend that. Human hair dryers, even the cooler settings, are way too hot for dogs and it can easily burn them. If you're bathing your pup at home, you can buy a dog hair dryer. I'll leave a few of those in the description below. Drying your pup's coat well can prevent so many issues like matting, hot spots, and bacteria growth. With huskies and these guys, it sometimes can be challenging to fully dry the coat well, but try your best as you can to do that. And then what we do after that, we like to go for a walk with them just to get a little bit more of that moisture out of the coat as much as possible. Once their coat is all blown out, we don't do any brushes, rakes, or any kind of tools on their coat, at least for 24 hours. After the 24 hours, it's a great time to go through a grooming routine to get the rest of the loose hair out. What you'll notice is that things change the way we bathe the Husky Squad. We like to improve the experience and improve the process every time we bathe them. But I can definitely say that there are three reasons why we choose to bathe our pups ourselves. We look at bathing time as a great time to bond with the pups, to spend quality time with them. Why would I give this away to anyone? Number two, we control the products and the tools that are used. When you bathe your pup yourself, you know the shampoo that you're going to use. You know the brushes and the tools you're going to use. You know exactly how it's going to be done. And I find this very, very important. Last but not least, we control the way they experience bath day. That is so important to us. Not just with bathing, with anything we do, we want the squad to have a great experience. Usually bathing time can be so traumatizing for dogs, so I don't want to put them through any kind of uncomfortable experience and I feel that if we do it ourselves, I make sure and we're guaranteed that it's always going to be a fantastic experience. Okay guys, so let's wrap up this video with the most popular question we receive about bathing the husky squad. How often should we or should you bathe your dog? This question can vary by situation, but let me tell you about what we do. We, and when I say we, I mean all five of us, we absolutely love the outdoors. There's nothing more healing, nothing more peaceful, nothing more bonding to us than spending time with the squad in nature. As you're watching these videos, these short clips from a lot of the videos we already have on our channel, look, the squad gets filthy. 
there's dust, there's dirt, there's sand, there's ocean, there's everything you can think of. And because we spend so much time in the outdoors with the squad, a healthy bathing routine is essential. It depends how much trouble we get ourselves into, but usually because of the active outdoor lifestyle that we have, we end up bathing the squad about six to eight weeks apart. If we lived more of the city life, we would probably bathe the squad about two to three times a year because they wouldn't get this dirty. But if there's salt water, mud, dirt, everything on their paws, in their ears, I mean, it goes everywhere and we let them enjoy the life outdoors, we find that it's so important to keep them healthy, keep them clean and keep them washed. Alright guys, this wraps it up for us. I hope you enjoyed this video, that you find this beneficial. We literally scoured through every single message we received through our website, through the comments on our channel, to answer all your questions. We hope you give all of this a try and you find this beneficial. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and let us know in the comments below how this experience is working out for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Husky Squad.